Go, John. Can you roll the PowerPoint? Yes, I can. There you go. Okay, that's me, Membership Development Chair. Next. I uh, just wanted to update. There's three clubs that are actively in the building process. Um, so we've got the Family Club with uh, Denise and Mark, uh, focused on homeschool families. Uh, that includes both the Frederick and Martinsburg clubs. Uh, located at Friends Wilderness in Charlestown, West Virginia, and it's a new prototype for a family club. So, John, uh, yeah. John, let me just jump in. And Jenny, that's on the the call with us tonight. She is representing the Frederick Club in that club build. So, okay, it's definitely a great joint effort. Thanks, John. Okay, good. Next, uh, the Washington D.C. Club. It's the name I've got for it. Joanne O'Toole and Leander Finder. Uh, again, sponsored by the Frederick Civitan Club. I uh, understand they're considering a farm project to provide training and employment for those with IDD, and this one is still in the planning stages. I believe they have some uh, some prospects, if you will. Uh, the next one is the uh, Civitan Club of Carroll County. Joe Tool. The Tools are involved in a lot of things, oddly enough, as is Leandra. And Mona Friedman is the director for Caring Communities Office in Eldersburg, Maryland. And again, this is sponsored by the Frederick Civitan Club. And they've got an information meeting scheduled for January 24th at 7.30. And there is a website that you can connect with them on. Uh, it's at Carroll County uh, Caring Communities. Civitan of Carroll County Caring Communities. So check that out if you're interested to see how they're doing. Next. Um, I have through the, the survey that we initiated long ago, uh, several people that have expressed an interest in helping me uh, with membership development. Uh, I won't name all of them, but you're welcome to join them. Uh, just contact me on that regard. I have reached out to each of these and have shared my contact information and promised or threatened to reach out to them uh, first of the year. Next. Uh, red clubs, uh, a term that I don't think I was familiar with before. Uh, it's not an honor. It's a club that received no new members, brought in no new members last year. So those are a target for me under my training and membership development. Uh, I've collected officer contact information for many of those. Unfortunately, some of them have not even participated enough to provide officer reporting, but I have again reached out to them, to those club presidents to offer support. And again, the threat that I will be following them the first of the year. Uh, so, so that's an activity. Other projects, um, I've had a few conversations with Randy Camden, uh, Smith Mountain Club. He's seeking growth support. Um, actually, uh, yeah, with his club, Lake. Smith Mountain Lake Club, whatever. Uh, and uh, I've reached out to, uh, to Josh Feltz, who is with both the Charles County and Fairfax Club, uh, and uh, trying to get some help in restoring the ML, MVLE Broadway Stars in Springfield, Virginia. I understand that is a group home uh, that was uh, pretty much shut down by COVID uh, just this past year. Uh, and, and so I am hopeful that we can get some leadership back in there and restore that club and, and carry on that project. So those are the things that I'm, I'm cheerleading. Uh, um, next project or next page. Uh, one of the things, you know, my, my idea of the month uh, is a trifold business card, something that I have used in the past. Um, just looks like this. It's a business card. It's like it says, it, it folds down to a business card shape. It's easy to hand out. So it's great for, I've used it for club building and for supporting club growth. Uh, it supports your elevator speech. Uh, you need to identify meeting times and places, club projects and accomplishments, uh, any service knowledge fellowship, kind of a framework there. Uh, it's key that you provide contact information, at least name, phone, and email. 
um, and a website so that they can find you. So if you can get somebody's business card uh, and, and give them yours, you have a way to connect and, and follow up. And one of the things that I do, if they don't have a business card, which a lot of people don't, uh, they can just input their information on my phone. Tell me their name and contact information that they're willing to share. And then I will make a note on there of when and where I found them. And so I can search it up. And it's all very transparent and takes just moments. So this is just a suggested way to help you as a club, you, you need to say, okay, what are we going to put there? You know, if you're going to recruit members, you need to be able to identify who you are, what you're doing, and why they should join. And, and so that's a good exercise for any club. So awesome. Uh, next. next. Boom. Um, another thing, you know, I, we've heard a lot, and Joanne is, is on the line, and she was there at the ARC convention. Uh, I'm really excited about connecting with ARC. I, I think that will uh, allow us some more visibility, uh, some potential for new and shared projects. You know, we can see what they're doing. They can see what we're doing and we can share them or use that to create others and potential new members. Whenever we meet new people, uh, a new person is a prospect if they aren't already. Okay, next. Um, this is where I open up for any questions or comments. And again, share this is my contact information. Send me an email. I will get back to you. Uh, give me a call, 614-917-9927. That's my cell phone, so you can text me. Okay. I do very well with email and uh, Zoom and text. And that that's my preferred means of contact. I, I don't tweet. And I don't Instagram, I don't TikTok. <laughs> Yet. All right, John, Audrey yeah. has a uh, has a question. And okay. Joanne, thanks for answering Nate's in the chat. <laughs> okay, what's the question? Hi, yeah, I just wanted to know, if, um, I didn't get a chance to see that business card because <laughs> the screen is on your PowerPoint. Can we see that business card once again? Let's see. <laughs> There you go. Can you see it? John, oh, yeah. Have, yeah, so you may have to take off your um, background because your background. it keeps getting blanked oh, out by your background. background. That, John, or put a um, put your hand behind what you're showing or so that way it can kind of block that background. Does that help? No. Okay, but it looks like three folds. Yeah. Okay. That's why and I where did you get it? Yeah. Where did you get it printed? Um, Staples, any place Staples. that does okay. printing can probably do that. Super. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Audrey. All right. Any other questions? And um, Nate asked about partnership information for our local arcs, and Joanne says that information is coming, so stay tuned. All right. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate very succinct and lots of great updates. Thank okay. You. So I think our group is, let's see, we're probably big enough at this point to do a quick breakout group of um, these questions. So I'm going to create three breakout groups. And um, the first one is going to be, what is your first memory of the holiday season? So you guys will talk about that for a couple of minutes and then come back and give us just maybe one or two from that group. And then the second group is, what is your favorite holiday food? to talk about what your favorite holiday foods are. And maybe if there's one that's unique or different, when we come back together, we can talk about that. And then the last group, I'm excited to hear if you reach consensus on what do you feel, how do you feel about re-gifting? Is it a yay? Is it a nay? Is it a depends? So love to hear the results of that conversation. So we'll just take about five minutes. This is just a little fun um, conversation to have with each other. So if you give me one second, we will, I'll create these, one, two, three, automatically assign, and you guys should be there in just a couple of seconds. What's our assignments going to be? Um, so Audrey, the one that she is in, is one, Bill is two, and whoever is, doesn't have those is three. <laughs>
Okay, so I think I have three here with me. What did I miss? Because I came late. Um, Nate, you have not gone to room three. Um, not much, just introductions. So you you caught everything. All right, Nate, are you gonna go join room three? Yeah, I think so. Okay, awesome. And I will broadcast. Hey, Dave, are you going to go to room two? Or are you guys jumping off? You're you're muted. I'll be on for a little bit. Okay, so I think do you have the button there just to join the the group? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Great things for our uh, for our uh, organization. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> As you see here, there are three public relation categories that are used frequently. Uh, the own media. This is where uh, uh, civic tan clubs do not uh, get involved with because they it's organizations that are owned, uh, and then with then we have uh, earned media. This is what we're going to be working with. This refers to any uh, content a third party creates about a brand or company without being paid to do, such as online reviews, social media posts, or word of mouth recommendations. This is the media type that will be used by uh, Civitans. <clears throat> Next slide. Okay, this is a template that was created by uh, uh, Paradis. It's a Paradis. They're a public relations yeah. company, and they're now uh, uh, hired by Civitan International. And this would be used in uh, clubs that they can create their own public relations uh, strategies. And uh, this is something we'll help you with if uh, once we get these uh, templates uh, provided to us. I checked the Civitan International, they're not available yet. But uh, as you can see, it gives you an opportunity to determine what your potential, who your potential members would be, uh, your community leaders in your uh, 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 area that you can work with, and all the different medias that you would have in your uh, uh, area, local area. This will allow you to uh, uh, strategize uh, and how you could engage the community. And then uh, it provides you with uh, uh, actionable items that you can uh, work with your uh, club members. And then uh, this is one way we could start uh, sharing the secrets that our club has and promote uh, the Civitan clubs in the, uh, in the demo demo demographics that you want. Go ahead, you wanna... Uh, Next, okay. This is how we would tell our story. For example, the Civitan Club of Dayton has had a great opportunity working with uh, uh, United Rehabilitation Services and at-risk youth. This would allow us, for example, uh, to promote information about what we're doing to other uh, media uh, types. And this will, uh, uh, give you an idea 
where you put the uh, outlet that you want to promote, uh, give the information to, and uh, what is uh, the timing? Uh, is it current or is it in the past that you had this done? Uh, and then the significance would be uh, how important it is, the information that you have, the significance in the community. Would it be something they would be interested in? And uh, any uh, uh, prominent, inf prominent individuals that you want to uh, pr uh, have. And then we want to make sure we have in our story human interest, something that would really impact uh, other families in the local surroundings that would make them interested in, and then the media would be interested in publishing this. Uh, next uh, slide. Uh, ideas, uh, how can we find who the media contact sources are? Well, <clears throat> All of us have, uh, all of our clubs have organizations that we are involved with, okay? If your club is doing volunteer work or making donations, this is an opportunity for, for you to ask them to be a part of the media when they're doing uh, photo, photogra you know, photographs of uh, the activity or the event. Maybe this is something that Civitan can also be uh, uh, picture it in. You could also get different media contacts that you need from the uh, people who are marketing directors within these nonprofit organizations. That once you get these contacts, you can, uh, on the next slide, you can use this template. This template is in the resources of uh, Civitan International. And we used this when we did the, uh, a year ago, when we had a 101 year anniversary for our Dayton club, we used this template and I was able to put in the information that would per pertain where you see the uh, subject is, you can erase all that out and just put everything that pertains to your club. And then the media contact, uh, <clears throat> first and last name of who is doing this, your phone number and your email address. And then you put in the details of your, of your uh, um, report that you want either put in the newsletter or the newspaper or to uh, 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 give it to uh, other media outlets. Okay, next one. What is exactly the uh, communications and and uh, marketing team going to do? Well, first of all, we're gonna communicate monthly to all the clubs. Uh, we're gonna provide you membership growth, success stories, a new club growth, and mission moments, things that uh, are important. Ensure news of events are submitted to local media outlets when applicable. This is something the, the Civitan clubs can provide our team with and you can send us copies of the previous template that you can put your news information in, and we'll try to uh, coordinate and send this to Civitan International. Uh, if you give us the media contacts, we'll promote those to them. Uh, we're also going to develop a communication plan for the region. We're going to serve as a post spokesperson for Civitan in various capacities for you. We're going to help develop and facilitate facilitate communication-based training to all our members. Next slide. Our organization, our team, we are the connectors. We're gonna connect clubs to the support level they need. We're gonna, I keep getting things blocked up on my phone here. We're gonna connect clubs to the mission and also the public to Civitan, that's the bottom line there. there. We wanna promote our club. Next slide. What have we done this year so far? First of all, we were able to create a marketing and communications team. We developed a new region four district Facebook group. All of you, if you're not on the Facebook group, 
for our district is there. It's uh, very easy. We sent everyone the invitation. We created the evite for invitations, and we had a great response. Over 500 uh, evites, and uh, quite a few still have not answered. But at least we're we're getting to know who's not opening up their their emails. First uh, holiday letter was sent out, uh, I believe, last week, and I believe we also sent it by emails to everyone and posted in Facebook. This was a letter that uh, our region for uh, uh, leader sent out. We're continuously updating our database. And what we may need is everyone, everyone in the clubs, their presidents and all the members in the club to make sure we have the correct email. Otherwise they will not receive our newsletters or other updated information. We want to post your success of the club news information into our Facebook page. We're already doing that. If you're not on our uh, Facebook page, please do it. You'll see a lot of good information on there. The is there a way to do it? Uh, is there a way for non-Facebook users to send their things without using Facebook? Is there an email address? We're, we, we're sending it out. If you don't have Facebook. I, I refuse Facebook. We're, we're going to send you an email. Once we have a website template for our uh, uh, district, we're going to have information that will also be posted on our website if you don't have Facebook. Okay, where are we now? Okay, the newsletters. Everyone, every club should send any items of interest about the club not about individuals the, for our <clears throat> newsletter. And the deadline date is December 30th. And Linda Hadley is the uh, uh, editor and will get the newsletters out. If you don't have for her information, you have mine. You can send it to me and I'll forward it to her. Next slide. This is news, uh, breaking news from Civitan International. Peritus is a public relations partnership with our organization. They're going to speak, have, provide us one voice. So we're all talking out of the same hymn book. Strengthen recruitment tactics through communication. They're gonna provide us with the resources we need for the clubs to use in recruiting. The upcoming tools that we can all expect is a new member orientation video, a club PR training kit, a press kit and collaterals that the clubs can use for creating uh, brochures or other uh, items of interest. Next, next uh, slide. And most of all, I wanna wish everybody a blessed holiday season. Thank you. Awesome, Tony. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great uh, update, good information. We did have one question. I think you may have answered it, but um, Pat Hertz, uh, I think it was Pat, asked, how will we hear, how will you communicate monthly? And it sounds like the newsletter is the way that that's going to happen, Tony. Is that right? Yes. It, it looks like they want us to do the newsletter, but we're going to do uh, three ways. We're, I think, I believe we're going to communicate uh, on a regular basis. Emails. Evite for invitations for meetings like this. The, the uh, Facebook page. For those who don't have the fa Facebook page, we're going to use the emails that they'll be able to get uh, the information. Eventually, our region will have a website. Everything is going to be uh, tied in with uh, all the other uh, regions. So we're all going to be having a similar uh, template, but we're going to have different stories because we have different clubs doing different things. And then once uh, I'll, I will mention that all the clubs will have an opportunity to have a template uh, for their website from Civitan International 
or use their own website if they have one now that they like. Great. All right. So um, I know we're past the seven o'clock and some folks need to jump off and I don't want them to miss Carol's update. So I'm going to forward it um, to Carol. But in the uh, thank you, Tony, appreciate again your your all the work that you guys are doing. Um, and Carol, I uh, will give it to you to take it away. Hi, everybody. The Cardinal District is familiar with this. Chesapeake and New England were not. Now we have a Region 4 district Civitan Scholarship. And the word you need is richlandcountyfoundation.org. Grants and scholarships, scholarships. Look for Civitan, the application is due January 31st. This is in Mansfield, Ohio. We have a $1,000 application or a $1,000 scholarship based on community service. It does not ask about financial status. So it's based on community service. Next slide. To be eligible, are you a junior civitan? Are you a campus civitan? Are you an adult civitan? Or, next slide, are you a relative of a current civitan? Grandchild or great grandchild, son, daughter, stepson, stepdaughter, nephew, niece, parent, spouse, sibling. This isn't just kids who are graduating from high school going on to further education. This could be all kinds of people that could qualify for this. So we've tried to make it as broad as possible. Next slide. Contact me, Siva Mom at Hotmail, <laughs> for further information. I'm the chairman of the project. I do not judge the applications that come in. The deadline's January 31st. So get those applications in. The application is online, richlandcountyfoundation.org. Awesome. Quick commercial. Thank, Thank you, you, Carol. Appreciate that. And we do. We are very excited to know that Carol does not judge. In case anyone <laughs> was wondering, she does not judge. Not All true. right. So <laughs> now it's time for our last bit of fun. I hope you guys can hang in there because this. Um, I did this activity. I'm with another group uh, earlier this week and they had a ball with it. So um, definitely just get a piece of paper uh, to record your answers. And we're going to see how many, how culturally aware you are of um, traditions in other countries and, and a couple in our own. So um, what you're going to say is true, it is a tradition or false, it is not. So either yes, no, true, false, tradition, not tradition, whatever, however you want to record it. But those are the two options. All right, in Japan, KFC is a popular meal on December 25th. Is that a true tra uh, tradition or a false one? All right, next one. In Iceland, Iceland, mischievous trolls drop off rotting potatoes instead of coal. Is that a tradition or not? Number three, Mexicans often ring in the new year by writing resolutions in the sand. Is that true or not? In Wisconsin, citizens celebrate the first snowfall with a barefoot sprint. Tradition or not tradition? During Hanukkah, Indians sometimes dip wicks in coconut oil in place of lighting candles. Tradition or not? Is that American Indians or not American Indians? Or, from, or people from India? People from India. Oh. In Norway, they hide their brooms on Christmas Eve to ward off evil spirits and witches. Number seven, in Caracas, Venezuela, they close some of the roads so that churchgoers can ride skateboards to church service. Number eight, it is tradition in Spain to wear blue undergarments on New Year's Eve. 
Number nine, in Guatemala, there is a trash and devil burning ceremony at Christmas with all the dirt and rubbish from Guatemalan homes. And then lastly, number 10, in Italy, the Vatican promotes the idea of a goblin that delivers Christmas gifts in order to counter the concept of Santa Claus, coming from the Vatican. All right, everybody ready? Does anybody need to see any of these repeated? Who thinks they got 10 out of 10? They're all false. Tony <laughs> thinks he got 10 out of 10. Of course, he traveled to half of these places recently, so maybe he does know. But let's see if he's right. Okay, number one, in Japan, KFC is a popular meal on December 25th. Yes, it is a tradition. So if you said true or tradition, you got that right. Number two, in Iceland, mischievous trolls drop off rotting potatoes instead of coal. That is true. It is a tradition. Number three, Mexicans often ring in the new year by writing resolutions in the sand. Anybody have a guess? True. It is not. That is false. Number four. In Wisconsin, citizens celebrate the first snowfall with a barefoot sprint. Any guesses? Yeah. Ah, it is false. They do not. Otherwise, there would be a lot of frostbite and flu in December in Wisconsin. Do something with cheese. <laughs> I was thinking polar plunge. I mean, whatever. I was too. That's a good one. It's a good thought. Um, all right. During Hanukkah, Indians sometimes dip, dip wicks in coconut oil in place of lighting candles. Tradition or not? Yes. Yes. It is. It is, it is a tradition. Yes, you got it. I didn't think they were Jewish over there. Where do they get the coconut oil? Indian. Probably question. from India. Actually, what's that? Well, I thought this was. Well, they don't have coconuts in India. I yeah, have no. Uh, yeah, as you say, I, I I would think that they do, but I'm not for ah. sure. Um, and I can give you guys the link to this if you guys want to play this with your family um, later to later in Christmas. Um, okay, so number six in Norway, they hide their brooms on Christmas Eve to ward off evil spirits and wishes. Witches, what do we think? Yay or nay? True. It is true. true. It is a tradition. Oh wow, I'm getting all of them correct. So yes. way to go! I'm getting these all wrong. <laughs> All right. What do we think about the state borders in Caracas, Venezuela? Do they ship to the closed roads? False. True. Joanne, you are so close. It is almost true, but instead of skateboards, they do it for roller skaters. Uh, that is pretty cool. It's all around the that same ballpark. Good question. <laughs> As wheels. Mark, did you say that was a trick question? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. That is correct. I didn't say it was <laughs> fair. I just said Good it was thing I got it correct. <laughs> All right. In Spain, it is tradition to wear blue undergarments on New Year's Eve. Is that true or false? False. 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 You are correct. It is false, but only because in Spain they wear red undergarments. That makes more sense. Months. Okay. In Guatemala, there is a trash and devil burning ceremony at Christmas with all of the dirt and rubbish from Guatemalan homes. It's rubbish. False. False. Rubbish. I False. hope not. <laughs> that is rubbish. It is it, rubbish. It is true. That what? Is their tradition. No. That's a true rubbish? They do. And, rubbish. and the background behind that is that it's because they, um, so they start cleaning out their homes and they take it all to the center of town throughout the weeks before the celebration or the ceremony. And it's to basically clean your house of all the dirt and all the trash and all of the bad spirits and everything that's negative in your home so that you start the new year with a clean slate, a clean home and goodness in your home. And then they literally put an effigy of a devil on the top of it and light the whole thing on fire. Very mm. interesting. Burning um, man. What's that? Burning devil. <laughs> devil. Not burning man? Not burning man. 
All right. So in Italy, the Vatican promotes the idea of a goblin that delivers Christmas gifts in order to counter the concept of Santa Claus. What did you guys think about that one? False. True. Again, it's a trick one. It is false. <laughs> but it is really close to the truth, which is the Vatican promotes the idea of a witch to counter the concept of Santa Claus. So they do, in fact, do the tradition. It's just they use a witch instead of a goblin. So what did you guys think? Did anybody get 10 out of 10? Yeah. I got five. 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 I got five. Two. Anybody better than five? Seven. 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 All right. Where's Tony? How many did you get? Five. Five. All right. So smack talking didn't work for you this time, did it? <laughs> no, 10 out of 10. So, Tony, that's your new um, bucket list to go to all of those places <laughs> where you got the wrong answers and go um, enjoy those. Verify, verify, verify. verify. <laughs> I would check out Spain. <laughs> Yeah, I was just in Spain. I didn't. I should have asked that question. Right. Yeah, while you were there. <laughs> what do you wear on? TV? Yeah. That sir, sir, got sir. You arrested. I can you see your underwear yeah. now. What, what asking everybody, underwear? can I see your underwear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See your underwear. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. We don't need you to verify that one, Tony. All right, awesome. So thank you guys. I hope you had a really fun uh, time tonight. I know I certainly did. Thanks for hanging out there for a few extra minutes while we had some fun together. But I wanna thank everybody um, it, for all of the hard work to get us where we are in 2022. It has been a crazy, fun, amazing, awesome, challenging, all the things, all the descriptions that could be used to describe a year describes 2022. But I know that all the work that we did and everything that all the changes that have been made are setting us up to make sure that 2023 is one of our best years yet. So thank you again. I appreciate all of your commitment, passion for what we do and cannot wait to hear about all the great things that we're able to accomplish in 2023 with these new resources, new people, new energy, and um, so that we can make a difference and our communities will thrive as a result of our work. So with that, everybody have a fantastic holiday, whatever you're celebrating and um, you know, stay safe and have lots of fun on New Year's Eve. And we'll see you January 25th in 2023. Take care, everybody. Bye, good night. Bye, Merry Bye. Christmas, happy, happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah.